Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? I am so excited for this video because we are going to be doing a first impression of the new Nomad Cosmetics Iceland Fire and Ice Eyeshadow Palette. I am so inspired by this color story. I just can't wait to swatch it and do a look with it. So let's just go ahead and jump right on in. Like I said, it is an Iceland inspired palette. So the outside actually has some texture to it. It's not just flat, which is really cool and it looks like some ice inspired artwork. And then the inside has like lava inspired artwork, which apparently I did not know this, but Iceland has approximately 130 active volcanoes. So I just really love the inspiration and the color story is absolutely beautiful. I love all the imprints on the shadows. I feel like it's an extra special little touch. I love that there's no beiges, there's no satins. So I just feel like I have very high hopes that I'm gonna enjoy this palette. This shade right here is calling to me. This shade right here, this one. Oh, I don't I don't even know what I'm gonna do today. I wore a red shirt because I thought maybe I'll do like a pop of fire and then mostly ice. So let's just go ahead and start swatching. I think I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this palette horizontally actually because that's kind of how the color story makes sense. So starting off, we have Frig, which it makes me so sad to ruin these beautiful imprints, but this looks like a really stunning neon kind of Tiffany blue. We have God's Waterfall. Ooh, my voice is raspy, okay. <laughs> Which looks like a soft metallic blue. And then we have, oh gosh. Okay, you know what? I've got time. I've got nowhere to be. I'm gonna Google how to say these things. Okay, I definitely would have pronounced that wrong without the help of Google. This shade is called Niflheim, and it, it looks like a matte deep blue. And it says that Niflheim is the abode of the dead in Norse mythology. Okay. Okay, next we have the shade River Glacier, which looks like such a beautiful, soft, like icy white with like a little bit of a blue to it. Definitely gonna be using that on the inner corner. Next we have Elves. That looks like such a stunning, unique kind of greeny blue shade. It has like this muted base and apparently that's from Norse mythology as well. And elves are a like demigod kind of thing. Okay, next we have the shade Njord, which was the god of sea and winds. And that looks like a really beautiful soft matte blue. I re Gosh, the shade elves is so beautiful. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit more of Njord. I feel like the deep matte blue and like the light icy shade aren't as unique. Like those are pretty staple shades that you would see in this kind of color story. But all the other ones so far, as far as being like blue green mixtures look really, really cool. I mean, not that I don't appreciate these just as much, but the other shades, I just, I like the unique tones. When you have as much makeup as I do, you know, you appreciate the little differences. Okay, next we have Hecla, which is a kind of bright orange, and Hecla is one of the most active volcanoes in Iceland. Okay, next we have a burnt orange called Muspelheim. So in Norse mythology, Muspelheim is the realm of fire, and it was believed to be the home of the fire giants. Apparently, it was very important in mythology. And then next we have the shade. Hell, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. H-E, only one hockey stick. And this looks like a really beautiful metallic red. Apparently, Hell started off as originally being the name of the world of the dead, but it later came to mean the name of the goddess of death. So Hell was a Norse deity. So here's the little pop of fire. Okay, next we have the shade Odin, which looks like kind of a, kind of like a sagey green almost, really, really pretty. And Odin was the god of wisdom, poetry, death, divination, and magic in Norse mythology. Okay, next we have a green here, which is a little bit more like a smoky green, and it looks to have little flecks of green shimmers in it, really pretty. It's called Gallows Lava, which is a field of lava in Iceland. All right, next we have the shade Dark Castles, which looks to be a very pigmented matte black. 
Okay, so I can't find the pronunciation of the word in Icelandic, but it looks like Dimu Borgir is the word. And then Dark Castles is the translation, and it is a large area of unusually shaped lava fields. So, that one is so pretty. I love that there's a deep, rich matte black. I feel like that definitely will add some value to this color story. Okay, next we have the shade Alfheim, which looks like such a beautiful purple with like a gray kind of thing going on. Looks really, really stunning. And Alfheim is the home of the elves in Norse mythology. And then next we have the shade Northern Lights, which is pretty self-explanatory. My camera stopped recording, but it is a really beautiful, bright kind of lime green. We have the shade Valkyrie, which is a really beautiful blue purple. Looks kind of like a duochrome. Just, oh, I love shades like that. This one's really interesting. A Valkyrie was a host of female figures who chose who got to die in battle and those who may live. So there's the final three shades. Super, super pretty, such a unique color story. A lot of the shimmers do have a very soft texture, but they look sparkly, and I think that I'm probably gonna end up using them with glitter primer, but overall, it looks really, really nice. So hopefully you enjoyed going a little bit more in depth on the names because I'm not that familiar with Iceland. So I think that's one of the things that makes Nomad really cool. It's an opportunity to learn. So let's go ahead and do a look now. Okay, so just to let you know, I did already prime my eyes with the Gerard Cosmetics Eye Base in the shade Fair. I literally have no idea what I wanna do today because everything looks so pretty. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the shade Frigg. Did I even look up what Frigg was? I didn't. She was the wife of Odin, and she was a promoter of marriage and fertility. Um, oh, that's so sad. It says in an Icelandic story, she tried to save her son's life, but failed. Well, that was a downer. So just dipping into that one, it's definitely a little bit powdery. I'm gonna go ahead and start that shade off in my crease. And just lightly blend upwards and add a little bit more. I feel like that blended pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of the shade Odin now on that same brush and I'm gonna pop that on. Oh no, I forgot to tap it off. Okay, well at least it dusted away. I'm going to just kind of tap that into the outer V and then blend inwards just a little bit. So far, blending really, really easily. All right, I'm gonna dip into the shade Dark Castles. Okay, definitely, like I said, these mattes are a little bit more powdery, so you're gonna wanna tap off your brush, but I'm just taking a little tiny bit of that and starting it off on my outer V. Just really wanna test this shade out and see how it blends, how it builds. So I'm just kind of mapping out my shape. All right, once I have my shape mapped out, I'm just gonna go back into the previous brush and just blend over the edge. Okay, that's blending pretty easily. It seems like it's gonna be a little bit more of like a buildable matte black formula rather than, oh gosh, I did it again. The ones where you go in with it and you're like, wow, this is hard to blend or it just really pigmented really fast. So I'm just going in with a little bit more, just building up and then again blending out. I'm also taking a touch of that black along the outer third of the lower lash line just because I feel like that's gonna help the transition to a pop of warm on the lower lash line. All right, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of NYX Glitter Primer and I'm just gonna pop that all over the front of my lid with majority of the product and then whatever's left over, I'll kind of tap into the outer V. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the shade Elves, just because that one caught my attention right from the start before I'd even swatched anything. And I'm gonna pop that on the outer half. Oh wow, that is so pretty. That was literally only one application too, that's beautiful. 
All right, I'm also gonna go ahead, and I don't know if this is gonna work, but I think it could potentially be cool. I'm gonna take that soft purple, and I'm popping that on the front of the lid. Ooh. I'm gonna be careful not to over blend it because purple and green can potentially turn brown. So I'm just gonna lightly dab, but I think that looks pretty. And that's kind of unique and a little different. You can see right here, there's just like a tiny little bit of overlap between the purple and the green that doesn't look the absolute 100% best. This shade would probably be better as a cut crease and if I went a little bit deeper and like went all out with this look, but still I think it's pretty. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Like I said, purple and green together can be a little, I mean, it's just color theory. <laughs> I don't blame them. It's not like they have issues or something with one another. I feel like I originally wanted to do a pop of warmth on the lower lash line, but now I'm like, do I, do I really? Cause I really like the like Northern lights kind of vibes that we've got going on with this look. So I think I might not do that. I'm going to go ahead and dip into the navy blue and I'm going to pop that on like the outer third quarter of my lower lash line, just kind of blending that into the blue, but leaving space for some more colors because there's so many beautiful colors to play with. I'm gonna go into the shade God's Waterfall now, just popping a little bit of that right here. You know I have to do it. I'm gonna take the shade Valkyrie, just popping it right here. Oh man, I'm loving these tones. Last but not least, I'm gonna take the shade River Glacier and I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. I think I'm gonna take the LA Girl liner in the shade Powder Blue and use that on my waterline. I'm gonna throw on some of my We Make Up More mascara and I'll be right back. I had to change my sweater because the red wasn't working anymore, but for a highlighter today, I wanna go into my Danessa Myricks Prism FX Hydrating Lotion because I always use this as a primer. I used it as a primer today and I know that you can use it as a primer, you can mix it into foundation, which I don't do as much just because I don't think about it. But I was thinking, I wonder if I could probably use this as a liquid highlight as well. And today feels like the perfect opportunity just because I remembered and I always forget. So I'm taking like the tiniest little pump and I'm just gonna put it right here. And I did go in with cream, bronzer, and blush today, so. Also what kind of inspired this is the new Auric Beauty Glow Dust Liquid product thingy that I wanna buy. I was like, let me just see if what I already have does the same thing. But I feel like this is a little bit too white. Like it looks okay, but it just doesn't look like a glow from within as much applied like this. Like it's not bad, but also it's not what I would reach for most likely. I mean, you guys can let me know what you think, if you think it looks pretty or not, but there it is. I can at least say I tried it. So last but not least for lips, I'm gonna go ahead and finish with the Necromancy Cosmetica Paper Flowers lipstick. I just thought this would be pretty because it's kind of like a really soft, like purpley, grazy type of shade. All right, so this is the finished look and I love how it turned out. I just really, really enjoyed working with the color story of this palette. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite color story they've done so far and I can't wait to dig into it more. I really, really wanna film a three looks with this. So hopefully I can start filming that tomorrow and get it up very soon. Let me know if you're interested in that. Part of my goals for this year and my channel was to do three looks with most of the palettes that I bring in. I did have that goal in mind with the palettes that I buy, but I would like to do it with the PR palettes that I receive as much as I possibly can. So first impression, I mean the mask blended really, really nice. Everything seemed to be a good, soft, easy use formula. Definitely a little bit more on the powdery side, so if you don't like super powdery shadows, this might not be for you. For me personally, I just try to remember to tap off my brush every single time before I go into my eyes. The shimmers don't feel super metallic or like the most intense shimmers, but they do have real, really beautiful sparkle to them. So I think over a glitter primer, they're just gonna be amazing. And even like the shades that I have on my lid today, I really, really love how they look. So I'm just, I'm really excited about this. I think it's such a pretty palette. 
such a good release to start off with to review for 2021. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.